welcome all. Uh, we are today on behalf of Council for Creative Education, myself, Hiram Kulkarni, and my colleague, Kari Loyuwari, welcome you all for the webinar on to the Finnish School Secrets. Uh, uh, this is a part two of the webinar. So, Kari, welcome. How are you? How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Hello, everybody. Also from my point. So the idea is that we'll quickly go through uh, the first event's uh, content and then and, and move very quickly on then to uh, this this week's uh, contents. So, hold on. Um, yes. Uh, so. Uh, give me a minute and I will start sharing my slides so everybody will go. I think we are still getting the participants joining from different parts of the world. So okay. welcome them all. Uh, and and uh, uh, let's let's wait for only a couple of seconds so that we all will be ready with the uh, participants for that. So welcome all. And I, I hope everybody can see the screen and we are about to start. Uh, so let's let's revise. So Kari, actually, this is a part two of this webinar. So let's uh, what happened in the part one. We'll revise it in just part, and today we'll go to some interesting parts. So, Good. so this was a part one, and uh, we we went through the top level picture of the Finnish uh, part. So welcome, Kari. You are the so Kari is our uh, pedagogical director for the CC Finland, and he takes care of our school development program and he guides the principals. He has a vast experience in in uh, Finnish schools. He was the ex principal of the Kirkoja Revi Kaulu in in Espoo, and since last six years, he is working with CC Finland and guiding all of us to develop the Finnish schools globally. So, thank you, Kari. Thank and, you. Uh, let's, let's go through this big picture first. So here you see the Finnish education system at the moment. <clears throat> we had a big change in the uh, 70s when we changed from uh, two uh, different kind of uh, systems into one uh, whole system where there are no dead ends. In the old system, the problem was that everybody just went for four years in the same school system, and then it divided uh, so that some went for six years uh, in the so-called folk school, and then went to vocational studies and, and, and then to work. And then the other part went into a, a middle school uh, system where they had to pay a fee and then the, that was the direction if you wanted to go to higher education. And the problem was that Finland being such a small nation, only a little, a little over 4 million people, uh, uh, we wasted a huge amount of, of good students because they couldn't afford going uh, to the paid uh, longer educational route. Uh, and, and so this, this new system brought so that everybody in Finland was trained for nine years in the mutual uh, schooling system. And after that, even on, uh, it was free to study going on to higher education, secondary, high university, vocational, polytechnical, anywhere. And then you could always, depending on your interest, you could always turn around, change, go wider, uh, and in this way, it opened uh, the doors for everybody for higher education. And this rose the standard of a whole nation's educational standard. So it was a huge, an immense um, uh, change. And at the same time, also the teacher's education trained, uh, changed. So it, it, it rose to, uh, so that uh, teachers were trained in university and everybody started to train uh, to have a master's degree to become a teacher. So there were these two very big uh, new points in this system. Yes, so this, this we already covered in the last, uh, last uh, part and then, and then we started working on to the 
some of the secrets, uh, understanding the more detail about Finnish education. So now I will introduce myself. My name is Hiram Kulkarni. I'm the director for the strategy and ICT development at Tech Solutions at CC Finland. And my area of work is developing the Eight tech solution as well as the strategic uh, for the school development uh, with various schools in Asia as well as in Africa. So that's what area. And uh, uh, last week also, last time we uh, understood some very interesting facts about uh, some myths we busted that the Finnish teacher salaries are higher than doctors and engineers. So that was busted. As well as uh, we also discussed about the, some of the interesting uh, facts and figures. So I will just go briefly through that part. And uh, uh, we went through some of the key principles of equity, cooperation, teamwork. Uh, and then we tried to go through the secrets. So secret number one we covered was content versus skills. We understood that, okay, what kind of skills the Finnish Ministry of Education as well as the Finnish government was looking from the future citizens. And uh, then Kari explained about this very interesting part of what is the content versus skills needed. Yeah. Kari. Yes, so, so we're talking about old pedagogy and new pedagogy. So in the old pedagogy, the idea was the teacher filled the children's head with content, uh, uh, fairly much skills, and the use of ICT was very small. And the idea was that the, you always, the students reproduced uh, existing information, and they were like information consumers. Everybody can remember from their childhood that you were practicing the heights of mountains, the lengths of rivers, the names of capitals of cities, uh, of countries, much of this very good no, common knowledge uh, but uh, in the old times you needed it because you didn't have google you didn't have mobile phones you didn't you couldn't carry a, a 10 piece uh, dictionary in your pocket uh, moving around nowadays everybody's got a mobile phone and they can google information very quickly so they don't need so much content in, in, in every subject or in, in every area of life. But, but the, uh, the thing that you really need is skills to use contents because now uh, doors and windows are open to libraries all around the world using your mobile phone, using internet. And, and that's the new uh, idea of the new pedagogy that ICT is in a very crucial um, uh, point, uh, uh, students, people, uh, citizens learn to use ICT uh, uh, widely, finding uh, contents, uh, using skills. Uh, and in this way, one main thing that the school needs to teach is critical thinking, because if you are stoned by all kinds of information, and then in the school, you collect information, uh, uh, you, you share information, and you produce new uh, information. And that's the uh, idea of the new uh, pedagogy. Yes, and based on that, we covered the second secret of Finnish success in the education is the open curriculum and what kind of curriculum it gives and how the importance to the skills and transversal competences have been uh, provided. And this is the baseline of the Finnish curriculum, uh, which has been given. We discussed about that. So those who would like to, this is first a recap of what happened in the part one of this webinar. Please visit our YouTube channel or Facebook page, uh, like that, subscribe to that so that you will be getting this previous versions of this webinars also and so that we will you can be able to recap it really well and then we understood the concept that what is the real school concept difference and how the uh, Finnish schools differ from the most of the implementations of the schools globally some common things are there but there is a pedagogical framework plays an important strong role in this entire uh, developing and creativity is at the core for that. So creative pedagogy plays an important part. 
Fourth part, four securities on the trust and accountability. We covered that part as well as a part of trust and accountability. And how is the hierarchy of this? Uh, the the overall Finnish society is a flat structure more or less. Uh, but also how is the it has been given the autonomy for the teachers as well as for the schools to implement the curriculum that we discussed. And the last part we discussed about the shared leadership where Kari explained about the uh, structure of how and various practices and strategies, what he as a leader did during that point. So to, re to recap it, please visit the YouTube part and YouTube as well as CC Finland website, subscribe to that and you will be able to get more update on that part. So, and we regularly update our uh, new courses and this is the course which is in the program in pedagogical leadership, Kari heads that part. And uh, this is uh, starting next batch in the month of February. So welcome and join that course as well. Now let's come to the, this now part two of the webinar. And uh, Kari, let's start the today's. So we are going to unveil five more secrets. So we started with the five first secrets and then five more secret. And let's try to see what exactly mean by those secrets, what is there. So we'll try to uncover that part. And this is one secret which I love the most. <laughs> Less is more and a lot of breaks and recess. What is this, Kari? Well, it's a joke that when people ask what's the secret of the Finnish schools. So the idea is long holidays, short school days, no homework and much recess during the school day. So actually it's like relaxing all the time. Well, <clears throat> in a sense, it's true compared to some countries, but the idea is that we don't have so long school days. We have actually quite short school days uh, compared to many countries. But the idea is that we work intensively during the school day. Uh, uh, and and uh, so that there's not so much to do more in the evenings, especially for the small children, let's say uh, grades one to four, uh, especially one to two. Uh, the, the, everything is mostly done during the school day. We have about four hours school per day for the first and second graders in grades three and four. It grows a little bit and in grades five and six, a little bit more. But the maximum in the grade seven to nine is 30 hours a week. So it's about five, five to six hours per day of the school day. And the idea is also that we have much uh, free time during the school day. The idea is that there's a 45 minute lesson and then there's a 15 minute break for recess uh, every uh, and in, especially in the morning, maybe the first two lessons we can sometimes even put together. So there's a double a lesson and then there's a half an hour break uh, you can have. And here you see school doesn't start the same time and end the same time like in many other countries. Uh, days are variable depending on, on the program of the class. This is a third graders, uh, very typical uh, week uh, plan um, where, where some days they start at eight o'clock, sometimes at nine o'clock and sometimes even at 10 o'clock. Um, uh, and uh, there you see the typical subjects and, and ones uh, that I want to point out are arts, woodwork, textile, handwork. These are uh, one part and music. In, on every, in every grade we have uh, these arts uh, uh, subjects, which we find are very important in our system and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on yes exactly so the interesting part here is that this is the timetable which is as per the timeline actually if you see uh kari was saying that there is a after every 45 minutes there is a short break of 15 minutes so what happens in that 15 minutes is also interesting thing kari what yes, does it do every school has a nice playground uh so the children go out to get fresh air. Uh, some kids love to go and play football in the summertime or in the warm time or, or go 
uh, if possible, if, if there's a little bit longer break, they go put their uh, skates on and go skating. But let's say mostly it's out to play, run around, meet friends, just chill out. Because uh, we have many times asked, what is the most important thing children uh, like at school? The answer is friends. They want to meet their friends and chat with them. And, and, and this is a good break between lessons just to get some fresh air, play around, um, skip, uh, do hot scotch, or, or just chat with your friends uh, during the, the break. Yes, exactly. And, and I think if you see the kind of the structures of the, of the most of the days, uh, there is a good amount of half an hour or more than 35 minutes of break in between for the lunch and also continuous breaks. And when the two, two classes are combined together, there is a larger break, which will make them a lot of freedom for the time for the teachers as well as this gives a lot of opportunity for the teachers to relax as well. Teachers also go to the coffee house and like, for example, they go to the teacher's room, have coffee, have a chit chat with other friends and teachers, and then they come back right. with fresh part. Yes. This yeah. is also for the, yeah, please carry. Yeah. Yes, in, in, in our schools, we have very nice staff rooms uh, for teachers to, to uh, relax, meet each other, and also maybe take care of some uh, works they have to do. Sometimes they phone parents, uh, sometimes they have some paperwork to do, uh, but there, there's, there's room. We've got nice sofas and armchairs and, and so on, coffee, tea, and so and, and it's important for colleagues to meet each other during the school day, to be able to chat, compare what they're doing, tell each other, share ideas, maybe do a little bit of mutual planning. Um, it's, it's very important that colleagues meet each other during the, the, the school day. Exactly. And actually, we, we use this method of the space learning where, where the where the, the everyone, including the teachers and students, get a space uh, for their brain to refresh and energize so that they can focus on the next task, yes. which are available for them uh, as, a, as a part of their work. Uh, one of the part, actually, we, we saw that it is one of the part, and this, this reference comes from the Pasi Salberit's book on Finnish Lessons 1.0, that you can see that the data shows that the countries uh, with a one of the minimum uh, eighth grade teaching hours, uh, you can see on the bottom side, Finland is one of the, where the number of teaching hours are the least, uh, let's say bottom three. Whereas the countries with a very require uh, heavy testing as well as require a lot of efforts to be there, they are on the top and we know what is the outcome for that and where the world is going for that. Along with that, the same, the same, the updated task is now in 2009, the same numbers, you can see it in the very differentiated part. So that every year we see there are many countries who are increasing the, the teaching hours per year. Whereas Finland is maintaining the more or less the same part because it's more important to the giving the free choice as well as freedom for the students also for their hobbies, enjoy their time and this makes a lot of things easier for them. So this is this is one important thing. This is one of the secret. And I think the teachers make use of this extra time with them for plan the lesson, make the creative ways of learning. And that's the area which has been concentrated. So it's not that they are also pressurized to do that. Obviously, because of COVID-19, things have changed actually, but to be honest. Uh, there is a good amount of pressure on the teachers because of using technology as well as the stress which is coming because of the uh, quarantine and all these things as well as stress. But I think more or less, they have maintained the same line. Yes. Am I right, Kari? Yes, you are. The idea is uh, of the teacher that they, uh, it, it would be more or less a 40 hour working week per, for teacher. So, Teaching in the classroom is one part of the job, but then there's also lesson planning, um, uh, mutual planning, uh, 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 assessing school, assessing students, many kind of works, but it's in the 40 hours of the week. 
and 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 in many countries when the teachers do so much teaching in the classroom uh, so then they they have uh, to do very much extra than out of the classroom and, and, and it makes their working week longer. So the idea is that because in, 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 our, country, in our country, the, uh, the ideal is about 40 hours a week uh, in all professions. So it's the idea is that also the teachers working week would be the same length. Um, thank you, yeah. Yes, true, exactly. So I think I think now now I'm getting a good messages from the our platform. So we are getting the, the teachers as well as educators uh, from more than 12 countries as of now. And now this wow. is 13 countries. And uh, we have good amount of uh, teachers and educators who have logged into our YouTube channel as well as Facebook channel and as well as on our website. So I think welcome all to everyone. And uh, Please put your questions and comments into the YouTube channel as well as onto the comment section of the Facebook or please put it the questions or the comments here and onto the Zoom meeting as well so that we can be able to take it towards the end of this session and we'll discuss more. And also please feel free to share your comments towards the end. We are more than happy to get your uh, audio video feedbacks as well on this part. So with this part, let's go to the... Shall we uncover the next secret? We just actually, I just, I just, I just put it uh, earlier as well, maybe. Uh, and, and actually, we earlier said that it is a open curriculum as one of the secret. But next, the implementation of the career, this curriculum comes with the diverse and interconnected subjects. That means the kind of subjects which the Finnish schools are using, they are. Uh, they are a lot of subjects which will help you to connect different experiences and real time life experiences together. And for that, I think, Akari, shall we go through and check some of the classrooms for that? Okay, actually? okay. Will, yeah. that, will, that, yes. uh, will that help? So maybe, maybe I think what I will do, I think I will continue sharing the screen, but I will, I will, I will take you to the actual the classroom where the Kari uh, can, can, can show you the, how the classes classes looks like and what kind of subjects are there okay if we go to yeah if, well this is uh, our um, sports uh, hall which can be divided into uh, two parts and there you see it um, there's a uh, uh, there's our home economy. Oh, okay, you're jumping. Yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can go here exactly. Okay, this is our home economy class. Uh, home economy is a very popular subject starting in, in grade seven when the kids are thirteen. Oh, yeah, where boys and girls, uh, maximum, uh, wait a minute, sixteen uh, students per lesson. It's the classroom is like four small kitchens uh, where they learn. Uh, basic cooking, basic skills in laundry, cleaning, uh, but mainly mainly uh, cooking where they first start with basic recipes and then uh, going on further on to special, uh, uh, special recipes. But the idea is so that when the children, when the young move away from home, they should have some basic skills to take to to be able to live independently. And, and this is hugely popular, especially now when you have all these Top Chef uh, programs on TV, everybody wants to be a Top Chef. And, and there you can see well, how relaxed it is. They prepare their food and then they sit down uh, and enjoy together uh, uh, the, the food that they've prepared. And also in this way also practice uh, table manners and, and and nicely setting up their table uh, uh, beautifully so that they can uh, enjoy their effort. This is the technical handwork class, which is in technical handwork, we work with wood, metal, plastic, electronics. And, 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 and uh, this is also very popular. Uh, unfortunately, it's often so that boys choose technical and girls textile very much, but we are lucky that we get also girls choosing technical handwork. Here, this is just a, you see nice wood uh, tools. Here is heavy, heavy, more heavy machinery 
which uh, students can use then uh, with their teacher when in the higher grades, because uh, it's, it's fairly dangerous. So the teacher has to be well trained and it's, it's uh, safety regulations have to be taken care of. Um, uh, this is uh, the, where they do electronics and this is where they do heavy uh, metal work. Uh, uh, and uh, every school being old or new, they have more or less the same facilities. This is our music class. Okay, okay. Music class. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think question, the question comes here is that, okay. I think we got a question on the YouTube that yeah. uh, if this kind of heavy machinery and everything is there, what is the concept of safety or accidents in the Finnish schools? An old joke was when I went to a new school and, and I said hello to the staff. So there would be some guy sitting on a sofa and say hi. And you could straight, straight see that he's the technical handwork teacher because he, he had lost some fingers. No, that's a stupid joke. But anyway, uh, <laughs> this, this is a very dangerous working with tools and machinery. And therefore the teachers are very well trained master's degree on the bottom and then specialized on technical handwork uh, and, and their uh, students are also introduced to the, the safety regularities and there's always the teacher standing by uh, teaching them how to use the machinery and standing by when they are using it so and, and accidents luckily happen very seldom but when something happens it can be very crucial there's, fingers are lost and, and, and something else could happen to it. But mostly, let's say during my career, being 40 years in the Finnish school system, uh, in my schools, there never happened anything serious. We, had, we, had, we were lucky there and, and we had good teachers who really took care of the safety regulations and, and, and took it seriously. Yes, and, and then we have a music as well. Here. Music, yes, this is an, uh, uh, an example. We try to uh, purchase good uh, instruments uh, so that we can then uh, have bands. The idea is in music teaching also, there's also all, always the music history, there's music theory, but there's also practical use of music so that we, the idea is to teach uh, children to play something at least a little bit. Uh, so guitar, uh, the, the ukulele is a very good instrument for that. Uh, we had bands in our school, many bands, uh, they could practice during the recess uh, moments during the day and after, after lessons too. Um, this is textile handwork class. And they use the sewing machines, they're doing crochet over there at the moment. Every boy and girl uh, does uh, textile and technical handwork. And in the beginning, every student uh, does a driver's license using the sewing machine. So they get a, a sewing machine, driver's license. That's a very nice thing too. And, and, and the idea is also here so that everybody would learn basic skills, even if not to well, anything else, but to learn to iron their shirt. Uh, use a needle and, and thread to put their button back on the, uh, and so on. But, but they really learn to do nice uh, clothes, all kinds of things. So it, it's really nice. Here we're in an arts class, uh, in the arts class uh, where they do painting, drawing, photography, uh, uh, pottery, uh, 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 ICT based uh, arts with computers, all kinds of this. Uh, uh, so it's also very popular. And the whole idea in this, everything here is that uh, arts and handicrafts uh, are connected to everyday life. Uh, in, the, in the 70s or b before the first, um, uh, uh, international these uh, tests uh, in Finland there was an idea in the employers union that schools should be clean from all this not so important subjects and we should concentrate only on these heavy subjects like mathematics languages physics chemistry and these kind and sports 
arts, music, they should all be uh, taught in, uh, in weekend and evening classes and, 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 and clubs and so on. But then uh, after the first international uh, tests where Finland came top uh, uh, and the, uh, they noticed that the Finnish school system actually was quite good. They shut up straight away and, and forgot the idea of, of, of uh, putting these important subjects away because the idea here is, let's just take an example of, of, of um, for example, Computer, um, uh, let's say mobile phones are a very, very important and popular thing, uh, product nowadays. A mobile phone is more or less the same, uh, be any, any mark, uh, the iPhone or Samsung or any, they are more or less the same. What makes them different is the design, the design of the software, the design of how it looks. Uh, and so, and, and where do you, where do you learn this? It, you learn it in handcraft, you learn it in arts and putting that together into heavy technology together, that brings the strength and that brings the importance and that opens the eyes of the student to seeing that everything that you see around somebody has uh, designed. Every doorknob, every chair, every fork or knife uh, there's always design behind it, and somebody has also built it in a factory uh, using machinery or using handcraft. And, and this also teaches children and students to uh, um, respect uh, objects when they see that there's hard work behind it, and there's much thinking, there's much uh, sitting down um, designing before this somehow easy looking object is produced and in your hand and in the shop on the shop shelf. Here in this, uh, if you put back. Uh, yeah, Gary, I think, I think, I think one yeah. of the interesting question which becomes, are, okay, can we see more, more of such things about the Finnish schools because we cannot travel there. That's a question which is coming on the, to the YouTube. So I just wanted to tell everyone that, okay, right. yes. Yes, so, so we have, uh, we have very interesting thing which is coming up now because of the pandemic, we, you cannot travel here uh, every year before 90, uh, uh, 2020, 2020, we used to have many visitors coming here on a weekly basis, monthly basis, and they used to visit the school. But now we have created something very amazing called virtual Finland school visit. Um, we will go through the live classrooms. We will visit the classrooms. We will interact with the teachers and students there and this visits uh, will be done uh, we are planning that almost every alternate week we will visit one more school the only challenge nowadays is that the cases are rising in finland uh, but there are plans how they are being tackled altogether but if everything goes fine that we will be able to take the classroom visits quite actively and you can be able to participate in this school visits and as well as do some coursework along with that so that you can be able to learn from your part. So please go and visit it. There is a discount also available on all these visits. So please join us and so that we can be able to go in detail about this uh, program altogether. So with this, with this plan, uh, thank you for asking the questions. Uh, we got this question from India as well as we got this question, the similar question we got from Saudi Arabia at the same time. So thank you, thank you, thank you for this, this part. And now we will come to the point which I was just mentioning here. You give me a second for that, and then we can we can be able to we can be able to work on this part. So uh, I think the question which comes that okay, if these are the subjects and which Kari just you mentioned that okay that earlier there was a kind of a pressure at some point of time that how you can be able to dedicate time for to very so-called hard subjects like mathematics or science. Uh, but how the subjects are being used here? So this is this is very simplistic figure or simplistic table of how many subjects are taught in entire primary grades in Finland. So this is from grade one to grade nine. You can see how many hours per week per subject is uh, in, in in the program, and and these green arrows you can see 
important uh, subjects like mother tongue and literature, mathematics, and, uh, and, and then in environmental and nature studies in total, that means geography and bio, uh, biology. Uh, uh, and, and uh, physics and chemistry and health education put together. And then, and if you, if you look how, much, how many lessons in total and compare with artistic and practical subjects, which are down, lower down, you can see how important they are in the whole, as a, in the whole picture. Uh, and also one very, very interesting uh, subject called guidance counseling, which is, I'm, I'm not sure if that kind of a subject is in many, many countries, but that's, uh, that's the idea that in, in grades seven, eight and nine, there's a specially trained uh, guidance counselor who helps uh, students uh, to plan their future after grade nine, going either to secondary high or vocational, and 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 through these routes, then finding professions and 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 the the life careers, and that's a very important subject, also in in our system. Yeah, I think I think one of the interesting fact, if you see the distribution of uh, of this, uh, how much efforts or how much time is given for each subject, uh, don't worry about the numbers which are given in between. But if you see the weighted average at the last last column, you can see that the mother tongue has been given twenty percent of the total lifetime of the school. Actually, it's it's quite a huge part. And same thing, if you see the total uh, uh, artistics and practical elective subjects, they account for almost more than 30% of the overall part. And this is very unique what the Kari was mentioning earlier. And the beauty of these subjects, which are the artistics and practical subjects, including home economics or, or activities for the arts and crafts or music, because these subjects are the glue subjects, what they can connect multiple subjects together and they can be used as a glue Example is in home, home economics, you just don't learn how to cook the food or how to clean the utensils or how to clean the things. But while cooking the food or making some cuisine, you know how to measure the things, how to estimate. Um, you, you learn a lot of biological things, how much protein is there in which part. You see a lot of biological ingredients are there. You learn about health education. So this one subject chemistry can, also chemistry chemistry yes. exactly mm, chemistry yes. you can learn through the same part exactly so this is I think one of the major secret why Finland could be able to use a lot of skill based curriculum or transversal competence based curriculum because of these subjects obviously mathematics sciences is, is important but you need to know what is the real time experiment or real time examples of that in the practice so I think. That is that is there. Uh, and that's, are, that's that's really learning by doing. This exactly. Is typically, this. Very true. Very true. I think I think today we are getting a lot of good questions. So instead of just jumping around the next slides, I think I think we can take a, just a quick one question. Um, we we will get first question from Miguel. Uh, Miguel, are you are you online right now? Because can you please unmute and ask your question? And you are asking the question about the. How is the day in secondary high or in the, am I right? That's the question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, here can, I'm Canada, uh, Toronto. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for this invitation. I'm really glad to be here. Uh, I'm a high school teacher. I happen to be teaching grades 10 to 12 this year. I have two subjects. Um, we are kind of very, very content-based. The system here is, uh, I think it, you have a, a lot of room for uh, working and innovating and trying stuff, but basically <clears throat> it's very content-oriented. Um, I have one course, which is a technical course in a production of digital photography and video filming. And uh, that course uh, has completely different um, kind of expectations and uh, situations uh, than the other course that I teach, which is Spanish. I teach a language. So they're kind of two completely different species, completely different breeds. So 
Um, in general, <clears throat> what I would like to know first is, is what is the structure of a day uh, in uh, a school for kids who are between the grades 10 to 12? I know that is super different because at different ages, different interests, and etc. But uh, basically, my question would be if you can just tell what is a day in a secondary school for kids that age. And thank okay. you again. Okay. Did you uh, age ten to twelve? Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Grades. Grades ten to twelve. Uh, grades. Which is, which is a Lukio, right. Lukio High School. Yeah. Lukio. Yeah. Yeah. Haram, do you have any? Do you, yes. Do you uh, have I, any I don't have a timetable right now, but 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 okay. But I can tell you the how how the day looks like because uh, so actually in the first figure which which Kari shared that what is a way in which how they can graduate. After their grade nine, which is here the basic primary education, you can have option of going towards the uh, secondary school, which is of more academic nature, what we call here as Lukio in Finnish, or you can go the option of second one, which is a vocational school. Now, in both the options, the overall learning experience is, is, is quite uh, based on your coursework. So you need to design your coursework, you need to choose your subjects, there are some basic mandatory subjects and or what we call as a minimum requirements for completing the part. And then there are a lot of elective subjects, optional subjects. We can. So your day is based on how many courses you have chosen for that year. Uh, that's number one. Second thing is that because it's a high school, uh, it's a your day can start very early in the morning at eight and it can go up to four o'clock. Uh, or it can start at eight and end at two, and then it depends. And also in between, you get a lot of breaks. Uh, also, there is a lot of project work that you may need to do. Uh, there is a lot of learning by doing. Uh, in the case of vocational schools, almost 70% of the work is learning by doing only. Only 30% you will find theory classes. In fact, there is a reform in vocational school education in Finland in 2016 onwards which gives a lot of emphasis onto the hands-on work, uh, internship, uh, working with the nearby companies and getting those credits as a part of the official credits system. In fact, in the old, old processes and still now, uh, there are few percentage of the students who used to go through the work experience altogether. Around two to four percent of the students used to go through complete work experience, but now they have used this work experience model inside the practical vocational schools. So this is the kind of uh, grade ten to twelve students uh, timetable looks like. Now those subjects which are like mathematics and advanced mathematics subjects, uh, those who go through that part, or let's say subjects which are like physics, chemistry, they have their own schedules of the laboratories. But within that also, there is a lot of integrated work which is required and they need to do a lot of assignments. Uh, to be honest, uh, whatever you see, whatever is, is on the green side here, uh, or like free time and everything, as you grow older in Finnish school, uh, the, the work is highly demanding. You need to really strive hard to complete those courses, uh, mainly because grade 12, uh, grade 12 matriculation examination is highly demanding. Uh, demanding in the sense that, okay, there are few questions, only six to seven questions you need to answer and you have six hours to answer question in the matriculation exams. Now it's, it's you know, you can understand what kind of reflection you need to have, what kind of thinking you need to have within those uh, exams. So, yeah. And uh, one more question I have uh, at this point. Um, what is a system of assessment and evaluation in courses other than the last course pr prior to getting into the polytechnic? Here we call it colleges or university. Like uh, what determines a kid getting a credit? I'm not sure if you have a system by credits or I don't know. Here is yes, my. We credit. do have. We do have here. Uh, in, in the in, in the Lukio, we have credits, yeah. Okay. Uh, in the how, high school. How is the evaluation system? Is a system a pay, pass fail or is a grading system uh, zero to one hundred? Can you just work around that a little bit? Yes, Gary. In the lower grades, let's say from uh, in the basic education from first to ninth grade, uh, the idea is the first and second grade. It's mainly uh, verbal uh, 
uh, uh, very simple and, and, and it's more like uh, 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 t telling where you're good and where you need to improve without any special marks. But then when we go to grade three and onwards, then we have a, a four is failure, 10 is excellent. So, uh, so let's a normal kid gets seven, eight, six, seven, and let's say seven, eight, nine. Um, that's normal. Uh, in half term at Christmas time, usually there's a meeting with parents and students, and there's a discussion. So it's evaluation discussion, where we tell what's going on in the school. The kid can explain what he or she is doing there. A teacher also tells what's good and what, what needs more improving and things like that. And, and, and then before summer holidays in May, end of May, they get their report card and there's the number from four to 10. Now this goes on up to the ninth grade, but uh, evaluation is also happening uh, through formal, formal tests, teacher after teaching a certain period, it makes a formal test to see how well the teaching has gone through and does do we have to do some more practicing or more teaching or can we go further on the students also do self-evaluation uh, they also do projects they do performances uh, the idea is assessment during using various different methods it's not only a paper test but the idea is that the teacher uh, observes the students throughout the year, throughout the term, uh, and, and giving different kind of tasks uh, in this way evaluates the student. And also, like I said, more and more important is the self-evaluation also there. So they learn, learn uh, to evaluate their own skills and, and, uh, and being honest in how they're doing. Uh, uh, this is a thing that we start practicing already from the first grade on. Yes, yes, very much. So, so practically, I think I think one of the key thing which which I could learn from the overall process is is that uh, there is a huge emphasis on the self assessment or self feedback, and that that makes a lot of difference. Uh, I am the educator as well as like uh, this. I do study research in the field of education, but also uh, at the same time, I am a parent of my uh, kids, those who go to the Finnish school. So it's uh, so it's a re real time customer feedback you can hear from us. Actually, one of the things which I could I was there that in the grade two, my son had to write down in in every aspect of the subjects, let's say mathematics or behavior or how do I perform with my team? How do I react to my different problems or whether I'm uh, keeping the healthy environment in the class? They have to give their own self-assessment grades on that part. And then the teacher writes down that part and also the teachers write their, her own feedback. This self-assessment gives a lot of, lot of amazing insight uh, for the student himself as well as for the teacher many times because many times we think that self-assessment is always that the student will overrate themselves but but our experience as well as the part in fact they underestimate themselves most of the times the students if the teachers think that okay he is let's say out of five he is at the four level most of the you will see that the, the student have put himself or herself at the three most of the time. And that's, that's a very amazing thing. And the same thing, self-assessment, self-realization goes on and on as you go, go, grow further. It is expected that you should know your work, what is the quality of that work, and that comes to the oral assessment part. Uh, by the way, one, we one, are having a one, separate... One, yeah, please, please, Kari, go ahead. I, I'd like to... Just one uh, remark about the secondary high. The mm -hmm. look Because uh, it ends in the metrical uh, tests. The, that's the problem of it, because then the whole three years in the secondary high is concentrated on doing well in the matriculation test. And, and that's uh, the teachers and all the students have noticed that that's in some way a big problem, because then there's not the same kind of relaxed freedom that you have in grades one to nine, because 
in there we don't have any these um, uh, same testing systems uh, in the lower grades but in the th last uh, three years in, from grades 10 to 12 um, uh, there's the, all the time the view to the matriculation test and that's why it's too focused on it and, and uh, they're like a prisoner to this test in some ways uh, and and I've heard that in many countries, because they have these um, uh, tests, uh, national tests in every grade, so they are prisoners also in the lower grades, uh, which prevents from freely studying and, and, and trying and, and uh, experimenting, which, which we are free to do in our lower grades, because we don't have these national tests. True, true. Uh, by the way, we have we have planned a separate topic on this uh, towards the last uh, 10 secret is on the less testing and more learning that was planned, but I think it automatically came as a part of question. Thanks for good, good question, Miguel, and, and, and welcome, welcome, and uh, please, please, please be in touch with us. It's happy to, and by the way, we have appreciated, okay, you are there very early in the morning, uh, get up and, and actually uh, uh, attending our webinar. We really appreciate this part. Uh, there is a one more question which is coming on to the Kushima. Kushima, are you also there uh, here online? And if you can just uh, ask your question. Uh, the question is about, I think, the student abilities versus the skill sets or and subjects which she can take. Yeah, hi. Hi. Yes, uh, I had two questions as such. The first question is, uh, what is the age group or in which, uh, at which level uh, do students get to make a choice of in which field they are going to uh, jump or they're going to opt for, like science, but science side, technical side, or they're going to go for literature, or they are going to go for the art side. Here in Mauritius, I mean Mauritius, here in Mauritius, we, we do get this choice at grade nine. So after grade nine, let's say, for example, a student can make a choice of doing science, biology, chemistry, and then mathematics. So he goes in the science field and then there would be no coming back. He cannot make a, a different choice than choose art side because he will be doing some kind of preparatory work only for uh, science up till grade 10. So that was the first question. And the second question is that, uh, when you go for, when you live for, the, like say for primary or even secondary, uh, or in the classroom, or, are there mixed ability students? Like for example, low ability students mixing with high ability students, or once the teacher finds out that there are some students who are of lower abilities, they go in a different room so that they can catch up with the higher abilities one. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Very good question. So I think we take the first question because for the second question that will come as a part of the next slide. So I think please, uh, Kari, uh, about the first question about right. the, when when so they he, when they find the their yeah, career but, paths and how they so choose. Here, here you see. Yes, yeah, thank you, Kushima, for your very good questions. Um, the uh, here you see in this picture, the comprehensive school is for everybody, and all subjects are for everybody up till grade nine. And, and they in the actually in the grade seven, eight and nine, there are some optional studies, but they're mainly then in these different uh, uh, arts, handicrafts, uh, home economy, these kind uh, special extra courses. But everybody does biology, mathematics, mother tongue, all these heavy subjects, uh, the same up to, uh, to the end of grade nine. But then you choose either you go to a senior secondary school or you choose vocational school. Vocational school means exactly what it's, it says uh, that there you have, um, you train for a vocation uh, and, and there's apprenticeship training and these kind of things. And the senior secondary school is more academic uh, and it's, it's more viewed to, towards university or polytechnical uh, studies. But like you see in this picture, 
there's no dead ends. You can always change. You can do even some students do vocational and secondary school together. They do a, a, a mutual um, uh, 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 diploma in that. Uh, so, so uh, but then you can always hop into the train, into the carriage that you're more interested in. But, but, uh, but mostly after vocational, then you can uh, go to either work or then you go to special uh, specialist vocational training, uh, further vocational training, uh, get, uh, get more work experience, and then you can go into polytechnical or then you can even try to get into university. Uh, and the, the secondary school students, mostly they aim into university or polytechnic. I think, I hope that's satisfied your question. Yes, yes thank you. Okay, and then and the next... I, think, I think one more interesting fact, I, I think the in the previous uh, slides, uh, uh, Kari mentioned about a very interesting subject called guidance counseling. Uh, I think that is a very important subject. I think the question automatically comes that in Finland, there are no formal standardized national tests till grade 12. Uh, but then how at grade 9, they choose between these two things? Because you can't just have a common test and then entrance test for the individual vocational part of it. So how they do it is very interesting that in grade 6, 7 and 8, or seven, eight, and nine, they have this mandatory subject called as a career guidance or gu guidance counseling. And in that guidance counseling, the students really can be able to work on their strengths, how they are learning abilities, what kind of learning styles they have, how to study, learning to learn, uh, understanding about what kind of businesses are there in the world, what are the opportunities, how the world direction is changing, everything they get to learn for the over the period of three years so that they will try to find their interest on their own. And I think this is the one special feature of Finnish education. Here, you don't choose the career based on your only ability, but you, cha you choose based on your interest, based on your passion. And this decision can go wrong your passion interest at the age of 13, 14, 15 is different than at the age of 20, 25. It may change, but nevertheless, as Kari said that, okay, nothing wrong in that choosing one field and then moving around and shifting from one to other. It is a welcome move. Leave that actually. We have seen many of the professionals changing their career at the age of 30, 35, 40, and government supports that. In fact, government pays the salary uh, for retraining yourself, reskilling yourself. Uh, and this is the important part. The crux of the story is that every person's skills are important for the nation building. Uh, because of the less population, every person's uh, skills makes something contribution towards the GDP or the overall contribution of the, of the, of the country. Uh, one of my friend actually, uh, and who is the current uh, member of parliament from Finland, uh, he, he gives a very interesting statistics that a person uh, who is unskilled uh, has almost towards his entire life, uh, almost has a total expenses of around 1 million euro uh, spending on the government treasury. That means if you are not skilled, if you are not finding your correct passion, your job, the overall cost of the health insurance, your all the expenses comes on the government, 1 million euro. So this is a pretty smart strategy of skilling the people and giving them opportunities to learn what they want instead of repenting it after a few years. So <laughs> that's, I think, I think I hope that uh, Kari, Kari answered your question. And, and then one, one more, is that there are so many professions that are uh, going out of, Date. Uh, uh, you can remember in your childhood there were many professions that were very typical, and nowadays you can't find them anymore. For example, in Finland, it was very popular to be working in a bank uh, behind the counter, uh, serving people. Nowadays, there are hardly any banks around. Everybody uses mobile bank uh, and, and digital money. So, so that's one profession that's out of date. 
uh, and, 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 and now we are training people to professions that we don't even know yet. So that's why uh, training school has to be very open uh, because we are training students to a, a future that is still very much unknown to us in many ways. Um, so it's very interesting to uh, see where we're going. Excellent, excellent, true, very true. So I think this brings to your next question and for that maybe we need to put some background behind that and which brings the eighth secret of today's webinar all together that we would like to go through that, uh, which is the equity and relaxed learning environment uh, for that. So first designing the learning environment by which you can be able to enjoy the learning, that's the first option and creating an equity based system for the for that and i think uh, this has been articulated very well by the uh, 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 by one of the study here actually uh, is that uh, pasi salveri in his book mentions this very interestingly that in many countries uh, we see there is a lot of competition and there is a basic concept that competition will help you to develop your quality or competition makes you to be competitive. That means you make the better outcome. Uh, but if you see this at the individual level, this may be true or false. We can see that later on. But at the country level or at the national level, this doesn't help for the country. So instead of competition, cooperation, teamwork helps for the country to develop this part. And for that, we need to develop the equitable system. Uh, if you see the countries which are highly equitable, their performance in the PISA test is increasing. Whereas the less equitable countries, their performance is declining. Or which is under, so you can see this differentiation very well. So uh, it's not the competition, but cooperation will make it more practical way of working. And that comes to the, your question that, okay, how the teachers, uh, also, or the how the school system support the people who need support. Uh, that means that you need to give the support. Equity is not equality. Uh, there is a difference between equity and equality. Equity is where you give the support what is needed. It's not equal for everything because everybody means everyone's capability is different. So this is the one which which really makes a difference. So take that example for example school meals. I think Finland is a very early country to start mandatory, uh, free, warm meal to everyone, irrespective of their social background. Even if you are a son of a prime minister or you are a son of an unemployed, doesn't matter, you will stay and eat in the school at the same time along with the class. Kari, what is an interesting experience with the school meal actually? Well, the school meal is actually a very nice uh, period of the day when uh, teachers together with their students enjoy a very nourishing meal. I've been enjoying school meals for 40 years and, and, and I'm not too fat. I'm fairly, fairly healthy. Uh, so it means that, that it's been quite good that what we've been eating. Uh, but the idea is uh, it's, it's a relaxed moment where we forget our like, let's say daily work and we just chat around with our students or they can chat around with their friends. Um, teachers can also sit and eat together. But the idea is that, that uh, especially in the primary school classes, teachers sit together with their kids uh, and enjoy the meal. And like you probably know that in Finland, teachers are called by their first name not, we're not Mr. This or Mrs. That. Uh, I'm Kari, another teacher is Heram or, or Maya or Tina or, or John. And, and that's also a nice thing that, that uh, we're fairly near our students also in this way. Um, we, it doesn't mean that we don't have uh, our authority. The authority comes through prof professionalism and respect, uh, both respect, our respect to students and students respect to us. And, and, and in this situation, it's like a family situation where we're enjoying our meal together. Uh, and then in, in the school kitchen, 
where it's provided we pre we, we we make food for different diets because there's allergies and there's uh, religious things so there are many different lines uh, in the uh, where you fetch your food then depending on what kind of food you're eating yes very much so i think i think school meal uh, and by the way school meal is an official part of the curriculum that means it is documented as a part of the curriculum requirement uh, and also making sure that everybody cleans the plates clearly that is a part of the behavior and and this has been done very amazingly uh, for example one of the school uh, which is the yuan puisto school uh, in espo uh, we we work that with that school very closely uh, once i was uh, uh, having my lunch over there and there were two kids um, waiting at the uh, cleaning desk uh, to make a counting of which class uh, did the least waste of the food and uh, the class which made the list they will get some kind of a movie time or they will get some kind of candies or something of of that part actually so that was been given and this kind of behavior is also been 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 appreciated well uh, and this is the important so school meal is not just uh, going and eating over there uh, it's the entire culture that you can develop through food actually uh, people say that that the uh, uh, the path to brain goes through your stomach and this is the, i think the uh, uh, finland has understood that very well actually in 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 early parts of 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 its its uh, uh, overall development and also uh, students help in cleaning the, the school restaurant after the meals uh, there's always a group cleaning group that goes then around uh, wiping the tables and putting the chairs back on place and 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 seeing that the the, the restaurant is tidy after after the meals uh, and it's also an important important parts of learning learning to take care of uh, of things so this brings to the next another interesting equitable as well as uh, uh, healthy learning environment is uh, finland has developed something which is interesting called as a school of the move program and uh, this means that nowadays the screen time is increasing uh, you can see that most of the jobs mandate you to sit down uh, earlier we had a lot of physical work even for doing some cleaning or washing you need to physically go now nowadays even in most of the houses you will see robots cleaning houses uh, and the robot cleaning is now just very cheap like so you can get the robots at 300 euros or 200 euros uh, and so that means that your physical uh, activity has really diminished uh, or reduced a lot so to understand that part finland has started this uh, understood the problem that now the kids are getting obesity issues diabetes issues uh, and for that finland has started this concept called the school and the move program which gives a lot of freedom to the teachers to have the physical activity in the classroom connecting subjects which requires physical activity which mandates them to take some of the actions in the curriculum as well as in the implementation of the subjects by which you can be able to use the various physical environment around you go to the forest use your time uh, make a lot of by the way it's not about only physical education because there is a pe subjects they are already there it's not and, and by the way there is a, almost like 2 hours per week on an average uh, students do a pe work example other than their hobbies and everything every means every time they go out for 15 minutes play outside but but in this case the school on the move makes your classroom more active that's the point uh, kari do you want to say something about it actually yes schools have also um, uh, purchased uh, equipment to use during recess uh, and there's a equipment library that you can um, uh, there's a, a Uh, there's a warehouse or how do you say uh, uh, at the side of the playground and there's a teacher or maybe even students who are taking care of this so students can borrow footballs or bats or skipping ropes or different equipment to use during uh, the breaks uh, uh, and and 
some uh, class can, if the uh, sports, uh, the gym is uh, free, uh, they can, uh, one, some group can go there to play and, and use the gym. Um, basketball areas are in use. Uh, and also uh, the idea is that uh, peop uh, teachers are uh, activated to invent the physical ways of doing some learning. For example, even in the normal classroom, you could have mini recess, uh, getting up, uh, jumping a little bit round, uh, doing a small exercise before sitting down and go, going on counting in mathematics lessons. Or you can do mathematics by uh, uh, going to the corridor, in the school corridor and, and jumping up steps, going up and down, uh, learning a poem but, <laughs> or do learning a rhythm uh, jumping the stairs or it's it's up to the teachers uh, uh, to invent different things you can do the main thing is to get people to move a little bit around during the day and then especially during the recess outside uh, get them to actively move there here are good pictures of of school where there are different activities you can do in the corridors Yes, exactly. So, so practically here, here you can see that uh, uh, how the corridors can be used uh, for activity. For example, this gives the steps that after every, let's say the teacher can give multiple examples. Uh, for example, this is the example of the two classes combined together and they were working on designing the process by which these kids who are inside the classroom, uh, they, they will do some activity and they will go out and then they will uh, do the steps as per the uh, markings on the floor. They will complete the round and they will come back and do the next set of examples of mathematics. They will go out, do they some uh, reading of the languages or uh, reading of some text from the book. Uh, and they can go and uh, walk on this, let's say, climb on this uh, kind of a maze. So using the maze on the sides of the wall uh, for doing this, this kind of physical activity, which makes it easier for them to uh, concentrate on the, on the, in the classroom, as well as being physically active. So these are the kind of some of the examples of the school on the move program, which has been uh, taken care of actually over there. So I think, I think today, today, today we covered a lot of things actually, uh, but but also we co covered a lot of questions. And now, and now there is also one question which is coming from. Maybe, maybe I will, I will take this question. Uh, my 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 friends, my colleagues can help me to find that question for me first of all, uh, because I'm not been able to find it here. Once more, hold on. Uh, there is a chat option is here. Uh, Yes, uh, yes. The question coming uh, on the Facebook live from Mubarak Akadar, uh, and he asked the question: Do you establish the same school model in other countries other than Finland, or if so, what are the requirements? Okay, thanks for this question, and I think that's that's the area uh, where where CC Finland is working actively. Uh, on CC website, you can see a detailed program called School Development Program. Uh, and, and in that School Development Program, you can see the uh, how we develop the schools in different parts of the world. We have already the schools which are active and uh, running in different parts of the world, including, for example, we have schools in South Korea, we have school in Taiwan, uh, we have school in India, and we are happy to tell you that, okay, currently in this call, we have the principal of one of the school also with whom we are working actively and they are doing an amazing job. Uh, the Silicon City Secondary School is also here. Uh, so the, the principal of the school is here. Sumalini, are you here? Can you just say wave hands to everyone if you can just unmute and say hi to everyone? I think, I think, I think she's... Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, uh, yes, yes, Sumalini. Uh, how are you doing? How, how I'm doing things? great. Hope all of you are doing well. Yes, yes, doing good, doing good. So, so Sumalini is the is the is the principal of one of the school from Bangalore, India. 
the school is quite huge of 1600 students it's a very active school and they have created a good learning environment within the school actually you can see the information about this school on this page of our cc finland website and also you will see the kind of requirements and how we develop the school and how we plan the schools and it it's a it's a quite a hard work of developing a school but our teachers are doing it really well actually so i think the answer is here actually for all of you so this was the kind of question which is here thank you thank you very much everyone so this was the kind of uh, uh, idea uh, so uh, to get to uh, the school development program or any of the work please uh, visit our website and if you have any questions or comments uh, to any one of us including kari or me or for anyone within the cc uh, please contact us on our website ccfinland.org or info@ccfinland.org in the email uh we were having some other plans also other than part but today we took a lot of questions and this uh, means that okay we are almost about to end our time uh that means that we will have the third part of this webinar coming up and in the third part of the webinar we are going to discuss about examinations and testing we discussed briefly today about it but are you interested in knowing about what kind of questions or what kind of examinations are taken in the matriculation exams in finland or what is the kind of a strategy which is being used in the finnish uh, assessments uh, what is the concept of the assessment for learning as learning and off learning so those kind of strategies which are used or the kind of methods which are followed in the formative assessment as well as summative assessments in finland so we will come back again and we will schedule that part Uh, please, please, on, please, yeah, please, please. Uh, I think we'll also be talking about support. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but I, almost, almost, almost. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, actually, actually, we mentioned that part because because I thought that because everybody is about to because it's almost yeah. one and a half hour. Yeah, yeah, but uh, next time, I mean, next uh, time. No, but no, but I think, I think, I think, I think. If if everyone is okay, we can take that topic now itself. Okay, okay. I think, I think, uh, just just because I need a permission from everyone because. we have given a time of uh, one and a half hour and it's almost about to end so i just don't want to overstep on the timing that's that's my point actually so guys actually if you think that it is it is uh, uh, it is okay to continue further uh, then then we will take it so just say yes continue and then we will take the next topic or otherwise we'll stop and we will have a separate webinar uh, for the support mechanisms as well so what what is getting actually i'm getting a lot of messages but i can't read the whether it's okay or not okay so so i think i think i think we are getting the message that okay please go ahead uh, okay yes please go ahead thank you thank you kushima thank you thank you sibran and uh, everyone uh, uh, miguel and everyone uh, also on the facebook we are getting message so let's take the support part so that we can be able to interestingly discuss about that now uh, so one of the secret another secret which which is a part of the is is the early intervention and support uh and for that again i would like to come to kari uh kari actually uh when i met you first time way back in 2015 i came to you and show you an article about you you your article in the newspaper i think it was in some of the australian newspaper and you explain about the kind of uh, support that you provide to your students uh, as a principal and as well as uh, the kind of specific intervention you did in one of the students life and that was really inspiring we would like to hear about it actually yeah it was in the smithsonian uh, magazine uh, well the idea was Uh, at that time my school was fairly small and i uh, as a principal i had more lessons to teach and i had my own class then and i was teaching grade 6 and then my students would be leaving to grade 7 to another school because we only had their primary school at that time um, and and i was a little bit concerned about one boy he had moved from kosovo albania to to finland some years earlier he he spoke finnish okay but he his uh, learning skills were very poor and and i could notice that he 
couldn't achieve the same uh, level that, that the other kids. And, and I was worried that he wouldn't do well in, in, in the higher grades. So then I talked with him and, and with his parents that what would they say? Would we, could we leave this boy to stay, to practice for one more year in, in, uh, in, in the primary school, do the sixth, sixth grade uh, again? At the same time, I, would, I was taking uh, as a new class, third grade. Uh, and then I, I, I said that to this boy that, would you mind if you sit next to my desk and, and uh, I'll give you much books to read and then we'll do a program with our special needs teacher and our reserve teacher in our school so that you would go through the important subjects uh, needed in, in earlier grade, uh, primary school grades. So we'll go through mathematics, we'll go through mother tongue. I'll give you lots of good books to read. Uh, we'll go through geography and biology and, and history, the, the basic things, just so that you'll get a good uh, extra new view about these subjects. And so that you'll be much stronger when you go on to, to grade seven uh, in the, the new school. And he said, okay, and the parents were said, okay. He didn't actually know what he was going for. Uh, but then, then um, uh, the next, next uh, uh, auto, uh, August uh, school started and I put his desk next to my, my table. And then the little kids came to the class and they wondered what this, what's this big guy doing in, in our classroom. And I explained that this is, um, uh, this is our friend and he's your new companion and he's going to do some extra work here. And then we went to the library, school library and chose some very easy books that he was, uh, might be interested to read. He was very clumsy in reading and he, wasn't, he hadn't probably never read a book in his life. I just put a big heap of books uh, onto my desk and said, choose from these and start reading and we'll be doing different things in our classroom at the same time. Don't let us disturb you. Enjoy these books and, 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 uh, and then we'll start with them. Well, he chose a very easy book with big letters and much pictures. And, and, and I just noticed when we were doing different things with the small kids that he was enjoying himself, just looking at the book and reading slowly and practicing reading. But clearly you could see that he was getting something out of the book. And, and then we made a program with my special needs teacher and my, I had a special needs teacher and a reserve teacher two professionals who planned so that they would take him out of the class and, and uh, privately teach him. They would go through geography, uh, biology, history, and then they would go through the basics of mathematics. And then they would also practice writing uh, small, small texts. So, so. And, and, and in the beginning, uh, he went slowly, but, but when he got the idea of it uh, and when the teachers learned to know him very well, it became a very nice thing um, for him. And, and you could see huge steps of his, uh, how he improved him, his, his work. And, and later on during the year, he was always better and better. And you could see he was choosing more difficult uh, uh, novel books to read. And, and, and you could see that he was really enjoying himself. And in the end of the year, school year, he had really improved so that he could really read well, he could write nicely, he knew basic mathematics well, and, 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 and in all subjects, he was, you know, ready to go on further on. And he then moved the next year to the other school where they were grade seven, eight, and nine. And then I heard later on from his teachers that he was doing excellently well and he was enjoying his school and doing well. And then when a few years went past and I didn't hear anything about him. But then one, one Christmas when we were having our Christmas events, uh, school in all schools, there's always this nice Christmas event where there are plays and music and, and all these kinds and families come to see their students, their children performing. And Bezart, this boy, he came over, he was a big adult, he had always his, um, his beard were growing and, and he, he, he was doing well. And he came over with a big packet 
uh, what's this? Well, I've got a bo bottle of cognac for you. And what? Why? Because you helped me uh, get through my school. And oh, oh it's my job. Uh, how are you doing? Fine. He had a he had a car wash company and, and and a cleaning company, and he was doing well. He was he was he had a family. He was paying his taxes, and he was really proud of his And he he just said that uh, and he was just so happy that uh, that he got help at the when he needed it in his school. And I was just happy to see that everything had gone well. So this this was really really one of my nicest things during my teacher's career that happened with this boy. Superb. I think I think I think it's it, it gets a goosebumps actually to to hear to hear the story actually. I, I think we can miss we if we get it, we can understand what you are getting uh, the feeling about that entire experience. Uh, but I think question comes here is that uh, see the timetables of the principals or the kind of a hectic schedules of the principals from different parts of the world, including I think in Finland, you must be having a lot of work to do. I think in many parts of the world, principal don't even have time to attend a few of the major important things from the teachers or part. Um, you, they have pressure of parents, they have pressure from management. It's, it's a quite a huge task. And in that, you took time to work with the students and giving them support mechanism. So I think that's, that's clearly amazing. I think, what is, what is the logic behind this part? Like how, how much, how do you get that time? Well, the, the, the idea is in a small school that my school was, I, I had, I taught 15 hours in the classroom and then the other teachers would take care of the rest of the lessons in, in my class. Um, of course, I had much administration. I didn't have any secretary at that time. Well, computers, of course. Was, but the idea was that I used those hours that I was in the classroom to be with the boy and, and, and see that and organize it. But then the biggest thing was collaboration with other teachers, uh, finding the other teachers who, who were able to help and then organizing it together. Then I would do my small part, but then I would uh, help build the program for this student. And together then we would uh, build a, a good weekly program so that he would go further on. Uh, and it, it was well because of the other teachers collaboration together with the others. Super, super, and I think I think that is that is also one of the area where where Finland has decided the strategy for its uh, uh, kind of a support mechanism that instead of finding the problem or finding the uh, problem maker as well as well, it's better to uh, try to intervene early. Uh, and help and give the maximum support possible for that particular child or the even the parents or even the teachers for that matter because it's not only the this is a kind of a teamwork where the students development is a kind of a combination of work of the teachers parents society all together so giving this support so uh, this is this has been articulated very well by one of the simple strategy so i think finland is using this strategy of prevention rather than the repair problems. Uh, so it, saves, it saves a huge amount of money. For example, this boy, if I had let him go on to the higher grades, he would be sitting in the classroom not understanding anything and not getting anything out of it, probably not getting a good vocation afterwards and, and, and probably un being un unemployed for many years uh, in his life. Uh, and not as satisfied, he could maybe get drug addict or whatever. But in this way, correcting, uh, uh, not correcting, but, but uh, supporting in the right time, giving help, uh, help him uh, kick, kick this guy uh, forward and, and, and giving him a life and, and saving a huge amount of money uh, from society in this way. And, and that's that's the idea of this uh, pre preventing, uh, preventing, preventing rather than the repairing. Because yes. Then, yes. Uh, as as you grow older, the even the some of the problems which get accumulated are difficult to solve. And it involves a lot of cost to correct those problems. So instead of identify it, don't label them, 
but start working with the issues and discuss with the parents, discuss with the teachers so that they can be able to work on that. And, and use, use the tools you have in your school. Every school is a bit different. You may have uh, teachers who have a, a lighter program in the week, who are free to maybe circulate in different uh, groups to support, or you have a, a library nearby where you can use the librarian, or, or you can have mm, maybe a parent who is uh, not working, but has uh, uh, skills, maybe is a teacher from, uh, uh, from training, but is free and, and maybe want to do some little extra help. You, use the tools you have around you to do uh, what you can in your school. Yes, exactly. And I think, I think, I think this reminds me one more example from my own personal experience, actually. Uh, uh, in, in one of the specific case or one of the subject, uh, my son was, uh, uh, was uh, we realized that, okay, he's not focusing well. Uh, or in fact, he is having trouble of sitting down at one particular issue and working on that issue. And this is the really truth uh, experience, which I got it. And I think Shirin, are you also here? So that both the parents will speak about the same experience. Shirin, are you here right now? Uh, can you can you hear me? Uh, so so me and my wife uh, can share this experience uh, with you actually. So the Siddharth, my son, um, was not been able to concentrate on one of the subject or one of the area. The teacher uh, discussed with us about this particular part, and she took a bit longer term observational view on that part. She said that okay, it's not a problem. Uh, yes, Shirin, can you please unmute, please, uh, and and can you play, if 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 you can, if if you are available. Uh, so uh, so the uh, so the yes yes so 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 we got a feedback uh, that uh, my son is not concentrating on one of the subject specific areas. Everything else is fine, but this area he is a bit active or he's not been able to sit down properly. Or it's not about sitting down, but focusing on some of the areas which. At his age, he should do that part. And then the teacher gave a good support. There was a counselor, there was a school psychologist, and there was even a doctor uh, who supported this part. And we had a common meeting with the, with the son and the parents and the teacher. And it was about discussion. It was about giving feedback and it was not about trying to find the problem or the problem makers. It is about how we can be able to navigate through this issue and that give a lot of impact. And Shirin being the psychologist, she could be able to tell more about that part. Shirin. Uh, yeah, so here in uh, Finland, actually the support system is, is very good and it's like multi-level, multi-fold uh, type of uh, support system. So we, uh, like as Hiram explained, we had this uh, common meeting with uh, all of them. Similar uh, thing happened with uh, uh, one of our acquaintances. And there also we had the uh, same thing uh, that we, um, we had a, a common meeting. They call it like a swing meeting uh, to translate in English. And then also there was like some issue, like a rage issue, mainly the child was getting upset very easily. So uh, we had this kind of a discussion with the daycare teacher. Then they, um, they made an appointment with a special education teacher. The special education teacher suggested a next level meeting with the, um, again, with the psychologist, social worker, a doctor, and uh, then all these people, they were trying to help us actually to get out of this situation and how to handle this situation. So I guess this is the best support system you can get as a parent, because like when you have, especially parents like us uh, who are kind of immigrants here in Finland, and we don't have any other family to support us. So this kind of support system uh, really matters a lot for us. Uh, true, true. Thanks. Thanks, Shirin, for this, sharing this experience. Uh, by the way, we are we are really moving, uh, let's say we are, we are going ahead of the time. So I think this is like the 
we covered most of the topics which we were about to cover but still there are interesting topic about the testing and examination is still remaining we'll come back to that part next time but please don't forget to uh, join our conference uh, the cc finland along with the un world innovation creativity day and with the university of yuvaskula we are uh, working on one of the interesting conference in the month of april uh, we are going to celebrate this we celebrate this world innovation and creativity day since last 3 years and this is the ninth uh, year of this conference uh, so this conference uh, you are welcome to join and uh, we have still 94 days to go for the conference so please submit your research work or if you have any creative classroom ideas or any good pedagogical developments you have done at your school this is the time to submit it it the conference is in the hybrid mode we will have a physical conference as well as online conference so please join us for this conference and with this part i would like to say thank you to all the participants of this webinar uh, those who joined from different parts of the world and as well as those who joined on the youtube facebook channel and cc website and all those who joined in the zoom meeting and asked very interesting questions for this part and kari thank you very much for very detailed discussion and it, it is good to discuss with you every time uh, and I, th i think i think i think we will do something amazing other than this what we are doing actually so with this part i really thank you everyone and wish you all a, again a happy new year and all the best wishes for all the seasons and festivities coming ahead thank, thank you thank you thank you bye bye, bye, -bye.